In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create our own custom element here. And in this case, it's a very basic element covering the entire bar and put in a number here, which is basically the data value. And you can see here as we hover over it, it will grab every color except for the black one because the black has a black border, which is that's why it's overlapping or blends within the bar. But let's start to look at how we can create this effect. So let's start to explore how to create a custom element on the bar on Hoover in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started this specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, copy the boiler template here, copy this. And if you want to understand this code, make sure you watch this video here. Paste it all in there, cut this out. And then I'll put that all in here. Save, refresh. All right, so now I have this. What I want to do is I want to maximize the size here. Let's make this 80%, save, refresh. What I want to do, and I want to do something very basic, but of course you can do it very advanced as you understand this, is to just cover up this entire bar with a new element. You might say if we do on Hoover, we could just change the background color. That is correct. But that's not really the focus here. The focus here is to cover, to create an a shape on top of it that fits exactly on the bar. And then of course have the text in the center. So we make our own data labels basically, or our own data labels plugin. So to do this, I'm going to say comma here, plugins, um, bracket. Then we can say here, let's call this our bar box because it will be a box on top of the bar. So then I'm going to say here, this plugin uh, block, then I'm going to say constant bar box, and then we have to make sure that here, curly braces, ID equals that. And then we can say here, when would we like to draw that after the data sets? So we do the data sets first, and then we draw this item on top of it. And now what I want to do here is the arguments is chart, arcs, and plugin options. Although we won't be using the last two. So then what I want to do is an object destructuring. I'm going to say this equals, and if you don't know what an object destructuring is, please look in my uh, description box. There's a video called Understanding Chart.js Object Destructuring. Very important. But basically what I'm going to do here is split out the object of chart. And what I need here is a few items. Uh, the CTX, the chart area might be useful, and specifically the top and bottom and then we have more comma maybe the the data itself and we have of course the scales so yeah x and y and if we don't need any of these we can always remove them afterwards so that's no problem so now we have this and what i want to do is first of all i want to show you a special command that will trigger if we are hovering on top of a element yes or no so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say a chart dot get data set meta index and this is a built-in functionality of chart.js so you say index zero but this is like a function so that's why we have here these parentheses now we say dot data and if i do now a console log you will see if i save this refresh open up the developer tab you can see here or the console log you can see here we have all this information here and you can see this is very interesting active false or true the moment it is active means that we're hovering on top of it all right so you can see it does something and then let me just show you we're going to say here index zero dot active so if i save this refresh and if i go and hover on this one you can see this is true now active is true if you move away or if you move away from it, you can see it's false. So this information here is very useful for us. All right, so now we have, or now we are able to track if it's showing or if we're hovering on top, yes or no. Now we can continue on with the most important part. So what I'm gonna do here is first of all, we have all of these. And of course, I don't want to only track of index number zero or of data index zero which is this one i want to track them for all of them so what we can do here is just a for each loop so i'm going to grab this 
Now I'm going to say here this, and I'm going to say dot for each. So we're going to loop through this array, and we're going to put it like this, function error expression, and of course, double parentheses here. So then what we're going to say here, the shorthand, let's call this our metadata. We have our metadata, and then we can get also grab the index number, because that might be very useful. And what we want to do now is create a simple if statement. If metadata dot active meaning basically the shorthand of this and active but of course it loops through every one of these bars so we'll see here if this is active equals true in that case what I want to do is well let's say your console log uh, let's do the index make sure that index is a variable because it's a variable here so then Let's save this, test this, open up developer tab. Let's make this a little bit there. Then if we go, you can see here, it shows false, true. Of course, it loops through it. And after that, it gets the value here. So it does recognize the item specifically on the one that we're hovering on. And that's most important. So now what I want to do is let's remove this and start to draw something. So let's draw here our nice, simple bar that will be on top of this. So what I'm going to say here is ctx.begin path. So I want to make a new shape that's independent of all. And then I'm going to say ctx.fill style. And the fill style of this, you could grab the official color here. For now, I will just do it simple and make it black. So it's easy to spot. And then what I want to do is ctx.fill rectangle. And this fill rectangle basically requires the coordinates. So we have here the x starting coordinate, the x of the y starting coordinate, and then we have here the width and the height. For now, let's make this just 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, and here as well. Save that, refresh. And if I hover over a specific item, you can see it shows here this nice square or a square box. So this all works, but of course, I want to make sure that this square is covering everything here. So how do we do this? How do we get these coordinates now? Remember, we have the metadata. There's still a lot of additional information that we could use. And uh, we can just do it in here. That's fine, because it doesn't matter if it's active or not, but the width, height, and the coordinates are always in here. So if I save this, refresh, we get a lot of information. And let's go on one of those. All right, and then we grab this. And then you can see here the following. We have here the base that is 40, uh, uh, 412, that is base this here, which is quite interesting that they already have that already. And then we have here the y, x coordinates, and we have the width, and we have the height. So because we have this here, that makes it really easy. So what we can do here is, first of all, our starting point on the x, we can see here what is the starting point on the x is this one here. So let's grab this metadata dot x. For the y, we can do metadata and uh, we can grab here the y. And later on, we have to do something more. That's our starting point. Or we could even start at the base, I guess. That's even better. And then we're going to say your base. So if I save this now and refresh, let's see what happens. All right, we're now getting there. But of course, you can see it goes down instead of up. Well, we have to do that one. We have to fix on that. But you can see here, and also it's not really in the center. So don't worry, we're going to work on that. So then we have here the uh, the width. Let's see if we can get the width of, if we hover over this. Then we get here again the item. We should have here the width, if I'm not mistaken. There you are, the width. And we have the height here. So all of those are important. So we want to grab here the width. And then if I do here, height. But we have to do some tricks on the height. So don't worry about that. So if I save, refresh. Now you can see here, all right, it always po points down. So don't worry about that. Let's first put it in a proper, or let's fix the height. All right. We can do here on the height, we can just say here, instead of plus, I want to make this a negative. So if I do a negative height, we should see here now going up. All right, 
there we are that's the first one but look it's not in the center or it starts at the center but i don't want this because where i want to start is here but it calculates the the x coordinates here exactly on the center so what we need to do is basically calculate this width divide by two so this center will move exactly here so what we're going to say here is on the width we can just say here let's make a simple constant we say uh, x half equals this divide by two so once i have that uh, we can say here we deduct the width or half of it oh sorry not we don't do it here but we do it in here because this defines the coordinate starting point and our starting point is off by 50 percent of the bar width so if i save this now refresh we should have here now a fully covered bar all right now we have this time to put in the text that was the final request here how do we put a text in here so what i'm going to do here enter enter we're going to say here ctx and what we're going to do here is we say here font equals and let's make this bold 12 pixels and then sans serif which is the default uh, font family serif font family of chart yes and 12 pixels the default font size being used so then we have this we're going to say a ctx and then finally we're going to say ctx fill style and i will make the fill style white and of course you could grab these if you want or maybe that's nice to do so what i will do is we're going to get this data here basically this data refers to this here data then you go to data sets and you can get the border color so i'm just going to do that one so we have that as well data sets index zero of course and then we say your data and then the index oh sorry not the data but the border color border color index will be based on this index here so then it will grab a specific color but of course you will not notice it yet oh all right sorry about that wrong wrong uh, tab anyway so of course you will notice it not yet in here if you see this here it's still in there so what i want to do here is the following i'm going to save this and then what i need here uh we need to put in the numbers in here we have to put it exactly in the, this number number 18 we want to position it in the center here or at least every of these numbers always in the center of the bar so how do we do this so first of all let's draw the text so i say fill text and our fill text will be uh let's say for now i'm just going to hard code a number 18 comma so basically this is the text value the text and then we have here the comma would be the um the, the y and the x position so we already know the x position that's basically this one here the metadata x which is exactly in the center so that one is fine for the text here let's put it on number 18 now so we can soft code that and this y here we have to just check on this one because we need to basically have the width the height here plus the minus height divided by two most likely so we have the half of that so if i refresh we'll go here uh all right i don't see it so let's make this 20 for now all right there you are you can see the number is pointing up here so what i want to do is i want to go on here but uh how do we do this we should have probably the base if i, I realize we need to have the base and then we have here the height so basically i'm going to grab here the base which will be at the bottom so you will see this now it's at the bottom what i want to do is i want to push this of course top but if you look at this it's not really in the center so let me just uh center it a bit so it says ctx dot text align yes basic css center save refresh all right now we're more in the center but i want to push it up so how do we push this up this is the base and what is the height the height is this so if i say here or maybe we can do it already like this constant y half equals this divide by two so i'm going to grab this then I'm going to say here minus this y negative because I want to push it up. So if I save this, refresh, now we have this, this, this. All right, always in the center. Beautiful. So what I want to do here, of course, why you don't see it here is because the border here is black as well. So that's the only exemption. So if I make the border here white, 
we should be able to see it. There you are. You can see here, but the border here now becomes a bit weird. Anyway, doesn't matter. You can change any color you want, but at least you have understanding what I'm doing here. So now I save this refresh. What should we do more? What are we missing more? The number needs to be adjusted into a soft coded number. And how do we do that? Well, remember we had the data here. Uh, the data sets here, basically we can just copy this formula or this variable here, but then just change the path because where are we going from data to data sets to data. And then we get here the number and we can just put that in here, save refresh. And now there we are. We have this almost like a, our own data labels plugin customized based on what we have here based on Hoover and it looks quite nice. Of course, you can remove this tooltip as well. We can add even more items in here. We could do maybe a, a circle around it. That will be fun as well, but that's maybe not a video. So those are the way, or this is basically the way how to do this. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you say, well, maybe I want to make more customized shapes. Well, in this case, I'm going to show you one that is really advanced here. You learn to make this a weird shape on purpose. So you learn every possible trick you need to know to create your own custom shape. So this one is called how to draw custom shapes in bar chart in charges. Highly recommend it if you want to customize and create your own elements or shapes and designs in chart.js. Yes.